Hello friends, this video on molecular basis of inheritance part 4 is brought to you by examfear.com. No more fear from exam. A comparison between DNA and RNA as far as their structure is concerned. Now how is the structure exactly? So if you see the strand, we, we always told that RNA is a single stranded structure because the ribbon like structure which you see that is just one whereas DNA has two ribbon like structures so it is a double stranded structure but what is this ribbon like structure made up of so this ribbon actually is made up of the sugar and the phosphate so the sugar and the phosphate forms this ribbon kind of structure and that is why it is said that the sugar and the phosphate forms the base I mean, it forms the backbone, I'm sorry, it forms the backbone of the DNA or RNA. So this strand which you see is actually formed by sugar plus phosphate and it is termed as the backbone. Okay, now what about the nitrogenous bases? Where are they present? So here you can see these colored structures which are present. So these are nothing but the nitrogenous bases. So here also if you see this is the backbone. The black colored strand forms the backbone and these are the nitrogenous base. So you can compare it to a staircase. Now what happens in a stair? Stair would look something like this, right? A normal stair. So this is how your stair looks like. So the what is the backbone of the stair? You actually need these two vertical rods or whatever you call them. So these two are needed. If you don't have these two, you will not have the steps, right? So these two form the backbone and that is formed by the sugar and the phosphate. But the stairs where we actually step in and that is how we reach upstairs. So each of these stairs in this case is formed by the nitrogenous bases. Now you actually see a variety of colors in the stairs. Somewhere yellow, somewhere red, some, and everything is half yellow, half red, half green, half blue. So that is how it is. Now what does that mean? Well, what that means is each color represent a particular type of nitrogenous base because there are different nitrogenous bases which are present in both DNA and RNA. Now in RNA, only these four nitrogenous bases can be present. That is cytosine, guanine, adenine and uracil. Now you see their structures have also been displayed and they are all displayed in different colors. So cytosine is blue so everywhere you see a blue that represents a um, cytosine. So now if you see this by looking at the structure of cytosine and uracil you can say that they are pyrimidine and guanine and adenine they are purine. Similarly in case of DNA they can also have only four types of nitrogenous bases and they are cytosine, guanine, adenine and thymine. So what is the difference between RNA and DNA in this case? Uracil is exclusively present only in RNA and uracil is not present in DNA. Instead of uracil, thymine is present in DNA and this thymine is not present in RNA. So this is another point of difference between the structure of DNA and RNA. Now another important and interesting part about the uh, way the nitrogenous bases are arranged is that the nitrogenous bases, they exist in pairs when you talk about a DNA. Now in RNA, it is just one single strand. So you just have nitrogenous bases one after another and they will be either of these. They are generally denoted by a single letter like C, G, A and U. So that is how you will have the entire strand of RNA. So that's simple. But in case of DNA, you have two strands. So in this strand, you will have a sequence like A. A, G, T, A, G, T, like that, you have will have a sequence on this strand. Similarly, you will have a sequence on this strand also. So actually, you will have a pairing between two nitrogenous bases. For example, you might have one strand which has A, G, T, C, A, so something like this. So the other strand will also have sequences, something like this. So this is how the two strands will be like connected to each other and this that is why you see half is red and half is yellow because these this represents the bases which are present on this strand these represent the bases which are present on this strand now a very important thing here to be noted is about the complementary base pairing it is not that any of them can pair with any of them so there is a specific uh, pairing which exists that means 
only some amino only some bases can pair with some other bases it is not that any of them a can pair up with t a can also pair up with g or a can pair up with c it is not like that so there is a specific pairing that exists between the nitrogenous bases of the two strands of dna now we will discuss that in the next slide because I do not to dump you, I do not want to dump you with a lot of information in just one slide. So in this slide, I think I'm able to tell you the difference between RNA and DNA as far as their structure is concerned. So I hope their chemical structure is now, I mean, you have got a good idea about their chemical structure. Because you know, all these things are very important because you do not, if you do not understand these, you will not be able to understand the concepts of how DNA uh, in, helps in inheritance. So now we will spend more time understanding about DNA. So we will be spending some time to understand various properties of DNA, uh, more important structural details about DNA. So but till now we were just talking about DNA, RNA in general. Now more about DNA. So now we, if we look at the entire polynucleotide chain of the DNA, then this is how it looks like. So you have the phosphate, you have the pento sugar and on the other end you have the nitrogenous base. So the bases in case of DNA can be either A, T, G or C where each of them stands for adenine, thymine, guanine and cytosine. And then these phosphate groups are connected to the sugar molecule of the next nucleotide by phosphodiester bonds. So this is how the entire polynucleotide chain is formed. Now if you look at the entire chain, I mean it is just not made up of four nucleotides as you see in this picture, but just to explain it I have just made it short. But otherwise it is a, there are multiple nucleotides in a single chain. But this chain will have two free ends. So this is one end and this is the other end. Basically these are the ends by which they are getting connected to the next nucleotide molecule. But the first one and the last one will be free on one of the ends. So it is somewhat like the same uh, example of the train. So suppose if you have a train where there are multiple compartments connected to one another. So what will happen here? If you see any of the compartments which are in the middle, on both the ends they will have one one compartment. But if you look at the first one and the last one, they will have a free end on either side. For example, the first one there will be no, uh, no compartment in front. Similarly, for the last one, there will be no compartment in the last. So basically, the two ends will be free. Similarly, in this polynucleotide chain, also it has two free ends. One is the five prime end, that is this end. Why is it called five prime end? Again, the same concept because there is a free phosphate moiety at the five prime end of ribose sugar. So if you look at this ribose sugar, it is this is the five prime carbon. So this one is the 5 prime carbon. So that the, since this phosphate group is attached to the 5 prime end of the sugar, that is why it is called the 5 prime end. And the other one is called the 3 prime end, that is this end. That's because this hydroxyl group is attached to the 3 prime end. So this one is 3 prime. So that is why it is called the 3 prime end. So it is always seen that whether you talk about a strand of a DNA molecule or a strand of a RNA molecule, it will always have one free 5 prime end and the other end will be 3 prime end. So that is how it is. So that is how it will be. So this was the structure which I showed you in the previous slide, right? This is how it is connected. So let us now talk about the structure of the DNA in little more detail. Now this structure which I was discussing so far just spoke about the various components which together form DNA. So that was like the chemical structure of DNA. But how exactly, how do we know that the DNA had a double helix structure? Because till now I have been telling you that it is a double stranded structure which are coiled in such a way that they form a helix kind of a shape. But how did we know that it is that shape because that is not a pretty simple shape right so how did we guess that it is going to be a double helix structure so that credit goes to these two scientists called Watson and Crick James Watson and Francis Crick so these two scientists proposed the double helix structure of DNA now on what basis did they do that 
they did some study based on the x-ray diffraction. So what do we mean by x-ray diffraction? Well, x-ray diffraction is a technique which helps to identify the atomic or molecular structure of a crystal by making use of x-ray. So how? What is done is that a beam of x-rays are made to fall on the crystal and then the x-rays will get diffracted into different directions by the crystalline atoms because the crystal is made up of many atoms, right? So when the x-rays will be incident on it, so it will get refracted and in different directions. Now measuring the angle of refraction and also the intensity of the diffracted beams a three-dimensional picture of the density of the electrons in that crystal can be determined and the density of the electrons can give an idea about the pattern or about the shape. So looking at the diffraction pattern, the electron density map can be created and once the electron density map is created, once you know that okay where all more electrons are concentrated, then you can roughly get to uh, predict the shape of that particular crystal. So that is how X-ray diffraction techniques work. So similar experiment was were performed with DNA and the diffraction pattern which was observed was somewhat like this, somewhat, something of this sort, some lines were observed like this. So in this pattern, so this kind of a pattern actually gave them an idea that it is basically a double helix structure somewhat like this right so this is how they experimented with x-ray crystallography technique and uh, looking at the diffraction pattern which was obtained they predict that it is a double helix structure so the double helix structure meant something like this so basically, if you actually look at the three-dimensional structure of DNA, this is how it should be. It is like a staircase. You would have seen a spiral staircase in any of the houses. You do not see a plain normal staircase, but a spiral one. So this is the structure of DNA is very much similar to that spiral staircase where the stairs or the steps are made up of the nitrogenous bases and the the backbone of the entire staircase is made up of the sugar and the phosphate. So this is how the double helix structure came into picture. Thank you. Please visit www.examfear.com to watch more videos, attempt free online test, get free study material, find tutors and mentors. Thank you once again.